Hi, I'm LD, and I inspected and approved this guide. Hey guys, this is Sunsfan, and welcome to the official Dota Cinema Guide to Bloodseeker. If you aren't familiar with this hero, you may want to watch the introduction we did for him at the corresponding link. Bloodseeker is an agility carry hero who has a very innate ability to chase heroes, which is one of the reasons he is such an effective ganker. He is very level dependent and is best served as a mid solo. Bloodseeker's typical skill build is very set in its ways, but still flexible to some degree. It's all really dependent on who you're going to be soloing against. We'll give you the safer build, but you do need to know whether it's needed in your particular game. Start with a level of Bloodbath and proceed to max it by 7. Get one level of Blood Rage at 2, and then don't touch it until much later, since all you want to do is silence enemies. Get Thirst at 4, and proceed to max it 2nd. Then of course get your ultimate rupture whenever possible, meaning at the standard 6, 11, and 16. Now the one thing that is flexible are the levels of Bloodbath. If you aren't having any trouble in lane, you could opt for skilling Thirst a little faster since it'll give you a devastating ganking presence during the mid game. For starters, get a set of Tangos. Then you'll probably want to get a Stout Shield since harassing Bloodseeker is kind of the cool thing to do in lane. Now if you're positive you're going against a melee hero who you'll have trouble outlast hitting, then you could opt for a Quelling Blade instead, but Stout Shield is much safer. In addition to this, get the usual Iron Branches, which you'll turn into a Wand at some point. For Boots, you have a choice between Phase and Treads. Both are acceptable depending on your specific game or just personal preference. If you're looking for some extra stats as well as the ability to switch for extra HP, mana, or agility, then Treads are your obvious choice. If you feel that last hitting in lane as well as the ability to run through units when chasing is important, then get phase boots. In the mid game, a lot of players rush a Radiance, which can be a really good item, but only if you're already dominating. Radiance is an item that'll help you snowball to the next level, but a lot of times will not be worth it in a grinding game. A 4 staff has to be considered core on Bloodseeker for not only its all around utility, but of course its obvious synergy with your ultimate. One huge counter to Bloodseeker is the ability to just TP away from you since you have no stun. If you don't want to run into this issue, then you could opt for a Yules. Even a Necro could be a cool option since it gives you some much needed stats, push power, and DPS. But after the core 4 staff, go for a BKB since surviving through teamfights can sometimes be difficult. After this, your options open up quite a bit. A Helm of the Dominator is a good pickup at some point if you want to use your Blood Rage on yourself. You can turn this into a Satanic later down the line if you like. Into late game, if you really need a stun, go for a Basher and turn it into an Abyssal Blade whenever you can. Butterfly is also an excellent item for a mix of damage and physical survivability. And for situational items, meaning items you can pick up in certain games and not feel bad about yourself, you can include a Shiva's, Manta, Diffusal Blade, Assault Curus, or even an Armlet. A Heaven's Halberd is also a great item in certain situations since you can help shut down the opposing carry while also giving yourself some tankiness. Lastly, a Dagon can be picked up if all you care about is burst damage and making your teammates rage. Usage wise, Blood Rage is very interesting in that it's used very differently when comparing early and late game. Early to mid game you'll want to use it as an enemy silence. Late game is for hard DPS. Put it on yourself or a hard-hitting ally that doesn't mind being silenced. Bloodbath, as we've talked about, is a great passive for staying alive in lane. You can even play mind games with enemies in a 1v1 fight. You may be low, but with a quick creep kill or deny, you'll gain some unexpected health, therefore putting them off guard. The skill is also helpful for ganks. If you get the killing blow on a hero, most of your health will be replenished, therefore giving you more opportunities to gank. And even if you don't get the killing bull, you'll still receive half the benefits as long as you're within range. Thirst is what makes you a great chaser. Even at level 1 it has max range, so take advantage of being able to see low enemies. But remember that invis units won't show up unless they are below half the regular threshold. But with this skill comes great responsibility. You need to always have your eye on the minimap. You'd be surprised how many heroes are low enough to trigger this move speed bonus and are still able to be destroyed. And of course, lastly, Rupture is the reason you get so many kills. The enemies will be forced to make a decision. Do I run and die or stay and die? That tends to work pretty well for you. For teamfights, your main concern is who to place Blood Rage and Rupture on. 
Rupturing a stationary target isn't exactly a great idea, but sometimes it needs to be done in order to keep him in place while the fight transitions just out of reach. And of course, Blood Rage on the wrong target can make all the difference. Silencing them is important, but giving them a ton of damage could end the fight prematurely. Heroes Bloodseeker should try and team up with include supports who can easily cancel teleports, including, but not limited to, Crystal Maiden, Shadow Demon, and Jakiro, just to name a few. Also, global or mobile gankers can be great with Bloodseeker. Examples of this include Beastmaster with his Hawk, Nature's Prophet with his ability to TP, and Zeus for being Mario's grandfather. Bloodseeker is countered pretty decently against heroes who don't need to run. Examples include Lifestealer with his Rage, and Ursa with, well, his ability to pound your face in if you get close. Also, as we've mentioned many a time, the biggest counter to Bloodseeker, especially in 1v1 situations, is the all-powerful TP scroll. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. Also a big thanks to Flawless and LD for their help in 